What's up, Wildcats, and welcome to today's episode of Change Up. I'm your host, Liam Barrett, and this is the first special episode of the podcast. In case you didn't watch the introductory episode, which you should, it's, it's like three minutes, I'm going to separate each mini-series with a special episode. They're basically cool ideas that I want to feature, but can't stretch out into a full series, and they can be about pretty much anything. For this episode, I wanted to highlight something that's a cool WJ tradition, but it's not often talked about, the painted ceiling tiles. I was able to get an exclusive interview with the man who's made the majority of them, so let's get right into it. Please enjoy. Today, I'm interviewing a French teacher, Ryan Martinez, known by most as Monsieur Martinez. Would you mind saying a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I am a, I've been here at Walter Johnson for about 14 years now. Um, I am a former student of Montgomery County Public Schools. I went through the French Immersion Program. I went to Blair High School. I learned a whole lot. Then I uh, did some odd jobs here and there. I was in bands. I was a graphic designer. And then I came to uh, teaching. And then I found out I really liked it. And I really liked teaching French. And I became a French teacher. And then here I am later. To start us off, are you the only person who makes painted ceiling tiles? No, I'm not. I started doing this project um, back in like 20. 11 I want to say when I first came to the school and when I was doing it uh, on my own I would be going around and giving tiles to other people um, I did about 200 ceiling tiles that are in the school right now um, but I have gone into other classrooms and seen that uh, like there's a there's a science classroom that's got uh, all of the tiles are painted and I and the teacher I believe uh, did that with her students um, and then sometimes I will have students uh, do a tile or a student will ask me, can I do a ceiling tile? And I'll give them one and they'll do it themselves. Does a student have to be in one of your French classes to do a ceiling tile? No, I've had students um, from... Uh, one of the nice things about the project is that um, art and creativity begets more art and creativity. So I will... I, I have in the past given tiles to a different teacher, like a Chinese teacher or somebody else, and they will have students that will say, oh, how did these get up here? Can I do one? And they will reach out to me. That happens about once a year. Um, last year, when there were all the protests in Iran, uh, some students from my colleague uh, uh, Miss Kanani's class came and said, can we do a ceiling tile that is uh, representative of the, the movement for uh, women uh, in Iran? And so they did one themselves. And how much time does it make you, just on average, to take you, sorry, to make each one? Uh, to, well, it really depends. It's a... So I got into the project because I wanted to paint. I mean, and I, and when you want to get good at something, you've got to do it for 10,000 hours, I've heard. Um, and in order to paint for 10,000 hours, that's problematic because you've, you're going to have a stack of canvases, you know, two stories high if you're spending that much time on it. And so I realized th th that this project, in addition to beautifying the classrooms, also gave me the opportunity to work on uh, painting and, and develop my technique. So some ceiling tiles I'll have an idea for that is like something representative, that I like a message I really want to put out or a specific piece. And that might take me a whole weekend just to get that uh, tile or series of tiles done. Sometimes mostly I was painting these before I had a kid uh, five years ago because um, of sort of the general messy nature of the process. Um, so I, back especially uh, before I had a kid, I would have five ceiling tiles I'd be working on at a time. And in a few hours, I would paint five tiles. But in that case, it's just more abstract. It's kind of just like pouring paint on the canvas and, and moving it around and just experimenting with color and, and experimenting with how the paint works. So depending on whether I want to be abstract or representative, it can take between, uh, you know, 10 minutes for a tile or a whole weekend. Would you say you do more like free form abstract paint tiles than structured? Yeah, the project went in that direction as I was, when I first started out with it, I felt like I needed to spend more time making like actual paintings, making paintings that would be representative or have some sort of message to them. But then 
I kind of got into this mentality of like, okay, how much space can I cover? How many classrooms can I put these in? Because I would be going around and giving them to colleagues, which was another added bonus that helped me meet other people in the school. And at that point it was like, okay, like just how many can I make? And so, uh, I got that went in a more abstract direction. Um, and, and as I, I did that for, for a while. And then I feel like I, I, I do art, I do music, I do different things. And when I feel like I've sort of exhausted the exploration that I can do in a certain area, I, I move on to another thing. And once I did a lot of the abstract ones, I was like, okay, I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself here. And then I would go on to do something else. This is kind of unrelated, but is that why there's like such a space between your different releases on your SoundCloud? Because for those who don't know, you have a Mr. Martinez is a SoundCloud. I, 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 oh. you know, the songs are great. <laughs> Thank you. And I believe in like a podcast interview that, not me, but another podcast interview, you said there's a space of a few years between each one. Yeah. Is that why? Because there's... Well, it's... Yeah, I... I see all creative processes as kind of being a, a similar output, whether I'm cooking or doing photography or painting or writing music or... Uh, what have you, or raising a child is also a very creative experience. Um, but with with music, it's uh, the way that I write music is that I want to have um, I want to have uh, something to say when I write. So I kind of need that amount of time, about five years to progress before I can have enough new ideas. Like I've got a couple good ideas that I like for my next album, but I, I can't just say, Oh, let me go write five more songs right now. I kind of need to have the inspiration or the life experience or think about an idea enough to, to put it down into music. For anyone interested in a SoundCloud, I'll link it after this. And I think you, you don't, I don't think I know you have another podcast episode where you went really in depth about this. Yeah. So I'll yeah. Like that as well. Usually when I put out an album, I will do a, uh, a, a like a recital, like a, a release party. But during COVID, uh, we couldn't do that. So we did a podcast, which is, mm -hmm. you know, a great way to uh, get information out. All right. Sorry about that. Tangent. No problem. No, 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 please. Uh, I know free advertising. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. And for the ceiling tiles, do you make them all in like one burst at the end of the year or is it more throughout the year? Well, it, I'm not making as many now because like I said, it's a, I'm a little more focused on music right now, but also, uh, with the kid in the house, I don't want to make as much of a mess. But when I was, um, living on my own, uh, or when I was living in a group house, rather, that was really sort of the height of my output. And at that point, I was not married, so I had more time. Um, and I would, be, yeah, just throughout the year, be, be working on it. And sometimes I would get a, a huge burst of wanting to do it, like if we had a winter break or if it were a time when I was could paint outside, then I'd be doing more. Um, sometimes we'll have bursts, like at the end of the school year with my AP kids, they'll do about six ceiling tiles per class because I'll put them in groups and have them do it then. Um, I, I've included it with other projects too, like um, there's a, um, an assisted living center in Wheaton and I will go and work with, uh, I've done this a couple of times where I've gone and worked with the residents there. Uh, it's people who have uh, physical or mental disabilities and we paint ceiling tiles together. And I've found that uh, it works really well because they are, you know, they're, they're willing to jump right in. Sometimes when you do this kind of project with people, they'll ask themselves a lot of questions and second guess themselves. And, and it's nice to work with uh, people that are just willing to, to experiment and, and, and bring a lot of enthusiasm to it. Yeah. And you can take a sec to think about this if you need to, but do you have ones, maybe, or a few mm. ceiling tiles that are your favorites? Looking around my classroom right now, which is where the, uh, the biggest uh, amount of my own work is, is to be found here and in the yoga room. There's also a lot in the yoga room there too, but there's a, um, there's two that I really like in here. One is, uh, of, uh, the world that, um, and me standing on it and it references, uh, the little prince, Le Petit Prince. Um, and it, it kind of touches on a lot of the things that I talk about in my class, like the environment and, uh, justice and that kind of stuff. Um, and there's also one in here in my classroom that is of a giant rose. It's three tiles all put together to be one rose. 
And that's meaningful to me because when I met my wife, uh, my now wife, uh, I, it was right before Valentine's Day. And instead of giving her flowers, I painted her uh, a rose and it's actually still hanging in our house. But in order to get it right, I had to do it several times. And one of the ways to practice was doing it on the ceiling tiles. So when I look at it there in the center of my classroom, it reminds me of that time when, when I met my wife and it reminds me of her. Yeah. If any of my listeners are in French 5, you'll get to grasp the significance of the Petit Ponce thing before long, I think. Yes. Are you reading that this year? We, we will read that this year. Yeah. And really, for anybody who wants to come by, this is in Geo 9, you can feel free to come by, and I'll be happy to show you. It's not just the, it's not just the ceiling. Uh, it's also, uh, there are two murals in here. There's a whole bunch of other paintings on the walls. There's, it's, it's really uh, an area that I have uh, molded in my own image because I feel like it's important with teaching to have a vibrant space and also a space that reflects um, the teacher's approach. And I want there to be a lot of things in the classroom that aren't you know, all necessarily logically connected with the curriculum because I want to encourage people to think outside the box. I want to encourage them to, 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 to make comments and connections that they wouldn't normally make because I feel like a lot of times with how standardized uh, education has become, uh, at least in, in Montgomery County, um, it, it, it's good to just say we're going to do something that's not perfectly logical. Not, it, not every step that we take, not everything we write, not everything we say is directly oriented toward you know, our learning objective. It, 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 I want to be interdisciplinary and, and, and have sort of more abstract thinking like I have abstract painting. That, see, that's why I like your class. It's more than just memorization or just like learning French verbs. Like we, we actually learn real life applications to stuff and we get to be creative. Yeah, and with language, there's, you know, when you take a test, a lot of the time, especially if it's like a multiple choice question test, it's like there is one right answer and you've got to find it. And with art and language and history and English and all, all the humanities and really with science too, there isn't just one right answer. You know, the, in science, it used to be that the earth, the sun revolved around the earth. That was the right answer. But then people thought abstractly and thought creatively and said, well, what if it wasn't that? And with language, it's the same thing. You know, there's not one way to say hello. There's a bunch of different ways. And it's the same thing. There's not one way to express yourself. Uh, and there's not one way to make a classroom. All right, so this question you mentioned to me earlier, but apparently the fire marshal tried to get Miss Baker to ban the ceiling tiles. Can you give me a bit of the background on that? Yeah, we ha there was a time a couple of years ago where, uh, like you said, the, the fire marshal said that they were hazardous and had to go, um, and it looked like we were gonna have to take them down, and I was fairly distressed about it, uh, partially because, well, I mean, I, I feel like they really add a lot of value um, I don't know about the science of why that's dangerous. I have, I, I w would feel differently if somebody could prove to me why that's the case. Uh, I have my doubts. But um, Miss Baker said uh, that we were going to leave the ones that were there, but we weren't. Uh, I, at that point, was like, okay, I'm not going to be bringing in 10 ceiling tiles a week. Um, but uh, we, the, the, the project kind of slowed down there. But, you know, there's, there's already plenty in the school to – make the the atmosphere brighter so um i appreciated that that miss baker would say that and say you know we're going to to we're going to make the decision to leave them up because they are you know uh, they're a tradition they're a part of wj yeah yeah so I did some research before during this interview. Do you use water or oil-based paints? Oil-based paint would be extremely expensive, and also <laughs> uh, it wouldn't really work well with the tile. One of the things that I try to do with this project and also that I try to do in my life is uh, spend as little money as possible. And so with this project, I needed to have paint in large quantities, and so I started going to hardware stores and getting paint that was like mis matched mismixed mm. so that i they call it oops paint and you can get like a whole gallon of it for like five dollars so i just started using that um so uh, you know the the tiles are free and the paint is very cheap so it's uh the amount of bang for my buck that i've gotten out of this i would consider tremendous yeah. um but yes it's it's uh, acrylic water-based paint yeah, because beyond price, apparently using water oil-based paints can like damage the fire retardant properties. I can imagine, yeah. Where, yeah, whereas water isn't as big of an issue. There's also very little paint on these tiles. Like the tiles, if you you're mostly seeing the white uh, part of them, 
and there's already paint on there. It's like a thin layer. There's really not much more paint that I'm adding on. You can get, you can stretch paint out a lot. So it's not like I'm, you know, totally uh, smothering uh, the, the permeability of the tile. And are you concerned about the future of the painting tiles, uh, sorry, the painted tiles, now that Miss Baker is stepping down? I mean, that's a good question. I, I feel like at WJ we kind of do things our own way, which um, can be a, a good or potentially bad thing. But I, I would hope that whoever replaces Mrs. Baker, Miss Baker would see the value of them in the same kind of way. Um, I, like how I was saying that the ceiling tile project is, is about thinking abstractly. Uh, I, I think that that was an act of abstract thinking on her part to, to understand the value of it. And I would hope that we would have a replacement for her that would maintain that kind of uh, approach. Speaking of their value, just to kind of summarize, why do you think that having painted ceiling tiles is important? What's their significance to WJ? It's, you know, I don't think of it as just being a WJ thing. It's something that I hope would would catch on all over the place. Um, like when um, there have been two documentaries made about the project, one by Voice of America, which is a um, uh, branch of the government that or a, uh, um, a department of the government that makes content to send to other countries. And I, I found out that the project was out because I started getting these emails from teachers in Russia and Africa mm. saying like, oh, this is so great. I want to do this. Um, I think that it will inspire other people to 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 see the possibility um, in things, which is which is a big part of the project for me. You know, if you if you are just looking at a white ceiling, you probably aren't going to see it as something more than that. But if all of a sudden you put in one painted ceiling tile, all of a sudden you say, "Wait a minute, you could paint the entire ceiling," and then you think you could paint the entire world. Potentials up are there. It's it's all there, and that's and and. I think a big part of school is getting people to see the possibility of things and 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 hopefully go out and, and try new things and, and pursue projects and try and make the world a, a prettier place. So I think that it sends a strong message. Um, and then if nothing else, it's just they're pleasant to look at. They're, it it kind of sends the message that we're not just here to, you know, follow the book one chapter at a time. It, it shows that I am bringing myself and my personality to this uh, to this uh, endeavor of learning, and I hope that the students will then be encouraged to do the same, to open up, to share about themselves, to share their ideas, because it's always richer. Uh, it's a richer learning experience when students can, you know, when everybody is opening themselves up and, and contributing. Thank you. Um, do you have any, like, closing thoughts or something that you'd want to say that I didn't ask about? If not, that's all right as well. What you no, just fine. said is really I, nice. I just, um, I, I hope that, um, I, I, I would say to, if to the high school students that are listening to this, that high school is a good time to explore different pursuits. Like I started learning guitar when I was in high school. I drew a lot when I was in class in high school, and I, I hope that people would, um focus on output rather than input. I feel like a lot of people are, you know, with our phones and with how much content there is out there, we, we take a lot in, but think about what you are putting out. Think about what are you using during these four years? Um, you know, when you're a young adult, what skills are you learning? What things are you going to be able to do that you're proud of down the road? Speaking of hobbies, if anyone's interested, you could check out the other episodes I did about clubs and new things you can join. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you guys want to check out some of the songs Mr. Martinez has made, which I highly recommend, you can search Martinez Sr. on SoundCloud, which also has the podcast episode about his music that I mentioned. That's just Martinez, M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z, no space, S-E-N-I-O-R. My personal favorite is Somewhere Someone. Thank you very much, Mr. Martinez, for letting me use that. And you guys should definitely check him out. And also, please let me know what you thought of the episode. If it's too niche, too long, too short, no matter what, I'd love to hear how I can make this podcast better. I tried to make this episode more personal and engaging and less of an interview, so I'm interested to hear what you think. Again, you can find the link to the Google review form in my Instagram bio at the WJ Changeup. 
or you can DM me on the same account if that's easier for you. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, see ya. Thank you to Ryan Martinez for agreeing to be interviewed, and as always, a huge thanks to the Walter Johnson Pep Band for composing the introduction song. Just a credit again, the song you hear right now is Somewhere, Someone by Monsieur Martinez, which you can find on SoundCloud at Martinez Senior.